Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Millo. Last week, there was an important decision by the U.S. Supreme Court that overturned a decades-old decision in a case called Roe v. Wade. Now, that case had held that abortion was a constitutional right of women. We're talking about the impact of that decision, not just in the United States, but around the world, including here for us in Jamaica. And our guests on this evening's program, we have Latoya Haridon lodge she's, an, a Jama she's a Jamaican attorney at law living in Florida. She's joining us from LH Lodge Law. We also have Jamaican attorney at law right here in Jamaica, Shirley Richard. She's a former head of Lawyers Christian Fellowship. We have with us as well Dave Ann Moses, social media coordinator for the advocacy group We Change. And Nicole Hunt is with us. She's a spokesperson and writer for the U.S. group Focus on the Family. We thank all of them so much for joining us and want to remind you you can tweet along with us our hashtag is tbj all angles before we jump into the discussion though producer giovanni dennis has this overview it was a decision handed down in the united states but it made news all around the world the U.S. Supreme Court, in deciding the case of Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, ruled that the nearly 50-year-old decision in Roe v. Wade had been wrong. But what exactly was Roe v. Wade about? The U.S. Supreme Court had ruled in 1973 that women had a constitutional right to an abortion. Because that then becomes law at the federal level, it meant all the states were bound by it. Today is the moment, right now, when we are going to learn uh, the fate of constitutional abortion rights in America. In 1973, the Supreme Court decided Roe v. Wade and said um, the right to uh, a woman's right to choose abortion was up to her until the moment of vi uh, until um, viability on the part of the fetus. They reaffirmed that many times, including in 1992, in um, um, a, a case a case that year. And now the Dobbs case involving uh, a statute out of Mississippi um, is a case about whether abortion rights uh, will be will continue under the United States Constitution. Um, it, this is a especially bizarre scenario in Supreme Court history because a draft opinion uh, of this uh, of, of in this case was leaked mm -hmm. uh, about six weeks ago uh, where Roe v. Wade was overturned. And what we are going to find out momentarily mm -hmm. is whether that draft opinion resembles uh, the court's opinion, which has now been released. And... Um, it's a very historical, historic and important so, moment. The decision immediately triggered protests. Some supported the decision. We have to make sure through a um, ballot initiative or a referendum for a constitutional change to make sure that there is no way to find a right to abortion in our state constitution. Others were vehemently against it. We have to communicate very loudly that this is government interference at the most extreme. It is the government literally standing between you and your doctor and saying, you cannot get this health care. Less than a week after the U.S. Supreme Court made its ruling, the anti-abortionists and pro-life lobbyists are gearing up for a prolonged fight. Outside of the United States, heated conversations are taking place about the impact of Dobbs in the ongoing push and pushback for the legalization of abortion. That conversation is also taking place in Jamaica. In 2014, MP for Southwest St. Anne, Dr. Dayton Campbell, called for the laws criminalizing abortion to be repealed. Four years later, in 2018, MP Julius Cuthbert Flynn called for a reform of Jamaica's laws to make it easier for women to have abortions. Parliament's Human Resource and Social Development Committee subsequently heard submissions from the public on the matter and produced a report in 2020 which has not been debated in Parliament. In May, MP for South East St. Anne, Lisa Hanna, put the matter back into the parliamentary spotlight with the tabling of a private member's motion. Giovanni Dennis for All Angles. <laughs> Oh, 
All right. So first of all, let me remind you, you can join in the conversation. You can tweet with us. Our hashtag is TVJ All Angles. You can also WhatsApp us. Our WhatsApp number is 3810072. That's 3810072876 in front, of course. And give us your first name and your general location as you share your thoughts. And let me see, let me welcome all our guests. Thank you all so much for being with us. Latoya, I want to start with you because we did mention it in that overview, but as, as you can imagine, um, as a Jamaican who has lived both here and, and now living in the United States, uh, sometimes it's a little difficult for us to understand a, a system in which you have the federal level and the state level. So let me ask you to start off by, by explaining in a little bit more detail for my viewers, why it is that this ruling from the Supreme Court in the United States has such an impact everywhere in the country. Thank you, Deanne. Um, essentially, the Supreme Court, whatever ruling comes down from the Supreme Court is the law of the land. And every state has to abide by that law. So in this case, the United States Supreme Court has overturned essentially Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Um, if a law is made at the federal level, like I said, it has to be uh, carried out through the state level as well. Various states can have different laws on their own that does not go upwards to the federal level. The laws come down from the federal to the states. And as a result, if there is any ruling that is made in the United States Supreme Court, then it affects every state um, that, that that ruling uh, uh, it affects every state, essentially, in the United States. All right. Now, I know you have concerns, you have issues with the, the ruling that came down last week by the U.S. Supreme Court. Tell me why you're so concerned. Certainly. Um, if, you, if you were to take a look at the language uh, that was used in, uh, in the case that came down this past Friday, essentially what has happened is they've overturned 50 years of legal precedent. Um, I look at it more from the legal side in the sense that there is a constitutional right under the 14th Amendment with substantive due process. Uh, a number of the justices, especially Clarence Thomas, then made way after the decision somewhere in their concurrence, basically outlining that because the precedent and the ground on which Roe v. Wade was decided is so flawed, that there are other rights that we have and that we enjoy in the United States currently that are also at risk, okay? And as a result of this overturning of Roe v. Wade, essentially, and as a result of the language being attacked, the substantive due process right to privacy being attacked, it opens the door for other rights of ours um, essentially to be abolished as well. We're going to look at issues of uh, availability of contraception. We're going to look at equality in marriages. I mean, I believe Clarence Thomas specifically named a few cases that dealt with issues like that. So it opens basically a floodgates for all the rights um, to be overturned and to be turned back to the states. And it's, it's, a, it's a matter for great concern. Let me bring in Nicole Hunt at this point because you have a slightly different view. Tell us your Thank view you. on the ruling. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so let me just start with how the court, my co-panelist is right that when the Supreme Court um, adjudicates at that high level, that if they're creating law or if they're interpreting law that can then be funneled down to the states, the states must follow that. That's exactly what happens in 1973 when they passed Roe versus Wade. When they passed Roe versus Wade, what they said was that states, even though you have criminalized abortion in the past, you may no longer do that because it is protected by the constitution. What they did just this last week in Dobbs was they said, we were wrong in telling the states what to do. The states actually have the authority and by the states, we mean the people through their elected representatives, whether that be at the state level or at the congressional level, the federal level, but the people through their representatives, they have the right to decide policy. And that's very important because in America, there is a separation of powers. The legislative branch, they are responsible for making the laws. 
the judicial branch, they're responsible for interpreting the laws. And then the executive branch is responsible for executing the laws. And so what we see happened in Roe versus Wade in 1973 is we see that the court actually stepped out of their boundary of interpreting law. And what they did is they actually created policy. They were acting legislatively. And what the majority opinion says is that the court should not have done that. There is no explicit right to an abortion in the constitution. The constitution is absolutely silent on it. And the way that the law works and the way that our country works is that if there is nothing that's said in the constitution, then these are rights that are reserved to the people through their representatives. And so we think the constitutional order was restored when the court ruled the way that they did in Dobbs and they gave the power back to the people to decide for themselves. Natalia? I dissent. <laughs> um, essentially, here, here's what we have. We do certainly understand that there are three branches of government. And it was this country was specifically designed that way to prevent tyranny, to, provide, to, to prevent tyranny of the majority. In this case, here's what we have had happen. There has been a tyranny of the minority. We had six judges on the United States Supreme Court, and, and you know, the, we, we can go into issues of conservatism and, and, and them getting there and so on and so forth. However, one of the main issues that we need to look at is fundamental rights are rights that need to be preserved. We cannot trust individual states to maintain fundamental rights. We, th those are things that ought to be um, at that point, those are things that need to be uh, dealt with at the, at the United States Supreme Court level. That is the only branch of government that is supposed to be a pure branch of government, not politicized um, and not in any way. It, it is supposed to be the last pure branch of government where fundamental rights are to be protected. And in this particular case, they've essentially politicized it. We've now sent it down to states which cannot be trusted to preserve fundamental rights for individuals. As we see it in cases like in Missouri, we see it in a various number of states that have right now a ban on abortion, right? We see right now where there are no exclusions for those bans on abortions. We see, for example, no exclusion for rape or for incest, for, ex for ectopic pregnancies. These fundamental rights cannot be left up to the states and the state governments because they will not be protected. It has to be protected by the last pure branch of government, which should not be politicized, which is the United States Supreme Court. I'm nearly at the break, but isn't the point of Dobbs Latoya that the court said, well, I mean, told I'm at the break. So let me go to the break and then we'll come back. Remember, you can tweet along with us. Our hashtag is TBJ All Angles. WhatsApp us as, WhatsApp us as well, 3810072. Soon come.